We slide out. Hello, welcome to Scratch Theory Printing. In this video, I'll be installing a poop catcher, slider, or whatever you want to call it, onto the K2 Plus. Let's scratch today's project. This is a slider or poop catcher that the poop shoots this way from the K2 Plus and slides down slides down and down here into a bin or a cardboard box or anything that you want to put it into. I surfed around the web a little bit and I couldn't really find one to that I like so I was like you know what might as well just design one myself since the K2 Plus print so nicely. And by the way if you haven't seen my unbox and review of the K2 Plus I'll leave a link up here or in the description down below for the K2 Plus unbox and review video. So before I get to the installation part of this, this part is printed with basically zero support or minimum support it depends on which one you get so i got two versions of this this part right here is the part that i printed first before i made the second revision and this one is printed with no support how amazing is that i hate support people hate support so i decided to model this part with no support at all the only support that it has to need is this part right here which is a dovetail joint i'll leave a link down below for that video too i made a video covering that topic but this is a dovetail joint and you don't even need to generate support on the slicer. I custom made the support here. So if you look at that, right, there's a custom support right here. So all you do is just push this thing in and then just peel it off like that. It's that easy. Custom support. If I don't do this, this will be 90 degree overhang. So it's just going to print mid ear and it's not going to work. And by doing this, you minimize the amount of support waste. And for me, it wasn't that easy to model this part because it was the first time doing this. I also made a bin for the poop slider or poop chew, poop catcher, whatever you want to call it. And this bin connects directly to the poop slider, which has a dovetail joint. So the difference between this part and this part is the opening here. This part has the opening here and this part is fully enclosed. So for the second part here, which has the opening right here, you need a little bit of support right here. You just need to generate a little support right there at the bottom here. And this can just easily be taken out. Just cut it, just fold it, just bend it. So just like that, a couple of seconds of support is taken off. And this part right here is for this piece right here is for the cover. So it's just a slide on piece. I made this texture pattern on the back here for grip so you just put it in right here and look at that it fits in perfectly. I could make the tolerance a little bit tighter but I figured that not every single machine is the same and this part is going up like this so that you can just easily slide it up right now. Okay enough with that let's get on to the installation part. So this is the back of the K2 Plus. I have to turn this around it was so difficult. Oh and by the way I have to print like this for two days which was horrible. The opening for the door is so small, I could not get anything out. Here's the back, the waist chute. There's two bolts right here, which is amazing. And this is where the filament will come out. So first of all, you need to take off these two screws because I utilize this screw. So here's our first screw. I have seen some waist chute um, catcher that you're supposed to use double-sided tape, but I don't want to do that. I want to use these two screws. And here's the second screw. You take off these two screws. So here's the first version of it. You put it on here and you can't really see that. So sometimes it might get clogged. You can't really, you know, poke your hand in there or you gotta go on the side, which is awkward. So then I redesigned this second one like this. So that it has this opening and you can see if there's any filament that is stuck. So now what you want to do is put the screw in these two holes. I made these holes perfect for this screw just screw it in a little bit do the second one and now we can just line up the screw hole here and just screw it in it's that easy there's no taping required there's nothing else is required for this installation you just use these two screw and just bolt it onto your 3d printer it's that simple so do one side a little bit and then do the other side a little bit so that it has even pressure it fits in there evenly. Don't strip your screw. That side is tight. This side is tight. And once you have that done, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's that good. And now if anything is stuck in there, you can just open this and try to take it out. And that's where this thing comes in. You can hide it like that. And you can open it, see it. You can hide it. Oh, that is so nice. Wow, I love this new version. 
Oh, and by the way, it was blocking this fan. So I made these vents. Look at that. It is on the fan, but these vents will help the air from in there come out and throughout this. Oh, by the way, if I didn't mention, this was printed in PETG. I don't really recommend PLA, but if you have to, you can do that. Because if you are printing higher temperatures like nylon, PC, PP, or whatever other high temperature vitamin, this back piece gets quite hot a bit and PLA might start warping, melting, something like that. But PETG, I feel like it's a good balance and it's easy to print. The poop is going to come out like this into the waste so all you need to do is just line this up and then just push it in like that it is totally secure no matter how many ways it comes it will go in here i am using orca slicer to do this i think if you are on creality print select which filament you want you can click feed and i think it will feed it but i haven't tried it yet if you want to you can go ahead and do that but for me i'm using orca slicer Oh, and by the way, how do you get a camera? I don't know how to get a camera. I tried doing it in setting, but it doesn't work. So first of all, you want to heat up your nozzle to 220 or whatever temperature you are doing. And then you want to come here, the tool. Select your tool or the filament that you want. So for me, I'm just going to do zero as that's in my PLA. So click zero. The CFS is engaged and it's going to extrude in my filament throughout the back here and into the nozzle head like that. I kind of like this CFS now because it retract and extrude super fast. Now that I got that out, I'm going to go down here and we need to find extrude test in the macros. Extrude test. You can click this arrow and click how many times you want. Let's do it three times and I'll click send. If you just want to do it one time, you can just click this and then we'll just do it one time. So usually when you press the 01 tool, it will do this and it will do one purge yeah okay so now it's doing the purge so let's watch here and see if the filament will come out okay nothing came out and now we can use the door to see if there's anything stuck yes look at that it was PTG and PLA stuck up there because after I printed this part I did not clean the nozzle and it was drooling so it just got stuck let me just take it out it's re-engaging as you can see there it's extruding but let's put this back so that it does not fly out and we'll see this in action look at that it came running in even though there was a part right here it still made it oh that is so nice oh and by the way look at this fitment it is so so perfect i could not get it to fit all the way because when i look at the back panel i feel like the middle is popping out a little bit and then the side is pushing in but it doesn't really matter it works and it looks great second filament coming out second poop hey look at that oh and if you didn't notice i also designed this part like a roof right here so that it does not pop out so it just hit here and if it bounces up it hits this goes down i'm in love with this one more We slide out. Look at that. This thing will not go anywhere because it's locked with dovetail joint. Everything here, I feel like it's perfect. It doesn't take that much space. If you make this smaller, the filament poop might get stuck. If you make this smaller, it might not fill out that much. And if you make it bigger, it might be way too big for your area. So I just got this bin. It's pretty tall. It's like 210 millimeters tall. I forgot but it's that tall but yeah if you want to go ahead and download this for yourself I will leave a link in the description down below as you saw there I just fully install the poop slide poop catcher onto the K2 plus with ease no double sided tape no nothing you just use the two factory screw that comes with the K2 plus you just bolt it right in and you're complete with the installation it's that easy all you got to slide in the bin to catch all the poop right i'll leave a link down below for this model if you want to download this for yourself and just use it i feel like you must need this unless you want poops all over your room your workspace it's not fun i've been dealing with that for two days and i could not even find the most of the poop it's scattered all around the room but with this it's all in one place this model took me two days to do it because of testing fitting testing 
fitting and modeling and all the things that get in between so that is pretty much it with this installation if you want to stick around a little bit longer for like two minutes i'll explain my process of making this thing and after that that'll be it so first of all i measured the dimension of the square up there for the opening i modeled it and i made first iteration right here which is just plain black pla because it prints the fastest easiest and the cheapest material and when i put this at the back there if it's quite good i was just testing the screw hole placement the square opening and how long it needs to be and this one was off like just by that much which is like what 15 millimeters then the second iteration was this one i modeled this one as a second iteration so it's pretty much the same i just make this a little bit shorter by 15 millimeters and i added a second slide right here which was so difficult it took me like one hour just to figure out this transition on fusion 360 which sucks and this thing also extends kind of far up here and i don't even need this useless part right here i don't know why i even modeled that in but the version that you can be downloading it gets rid of this it's basically that version slim nice and just that so for this version i decided to you know have this drop down cover drop down bin right here this is just like a guide and i was planning to make the box over this so my first thought was okay let me try and save some materials some printing materials by doing this i'll just make the box like that so that i don't have to print this much and by reducing this much i will be reducing the box by about that much so it saves time the box will be like this big only but it was annoying when i was doing it and i was thinking like so this part is going to be flushed with the 3d printer but if i had to put this thing in i will have to remodel this and push this thing like five millimeters away from the 3d printer and i will have to put this box in there like this so that the poops doesn't accidentally fly out if i do it like this high right so i gotta put the bin like this and if i want to take this out i will need to remove this part right here which is hold by dovetail joint 2 i want to remove this part and then i can remove the bed from it so that was the process of when i was modeling this and i was like that's way too much work to do so i was like you know what might as well just make the bin this big and add the dovetail joint to one end like this and just slide it in like this so that i don't have to do two work i only need to do one work just sliding the bin out pouring all the poops and then just sliding in the bin back like this which is like 10 times easier and by the way if i just put the bin at the table right here the three machines go to work wiggles a lot this thing might get off shake and might fall off your table or something like that and you might need to double sided tape this to a 3d printer or something else and that's like lots and lots of work right so i revised everything and get rid of this drop down bin here and just added the dovetail joint to the bin itself and just make it connect like that and this was the final version and i feel like that is the easiest the best way to do it oh and by the way i added this hole up here so that you can just pop this out unclog this and then just put that back right in this one doesn't have that this was almost perfect but that it's even more perfect <sighs> well that is a lot of talking and the video is dragging in for way too long i'm sorry about that i just want to explain everything that i have done in the past two days for this project it really excites me talking about this stuff so if you are too leave a like leave a comment down below how can i improve this what would you change what would you add and yeah just let me know how this works if you download it let me know how this works if you haven't yet subscribe to this channel because more amazing projects like this is coming thank you so much for watching as always keep on 3d printing